Good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I show it's about two minutes till we'll start at just about 12. So give a few minutes for everybody to finish logging on and then we'll begin. Okay, I'm showing 12 o'clock, but I'm watching the participants numbers increase. So I think we're expecting there were 200 registrants and I see that we're at 144. See when it peters out. Just give time for these people to, to get on. All right, we're at 186, 188, still climbing. All right, we're over 200. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started and then Hopefully everybody will be able to catch this. Um, good afternoon, good morning. Um, my name is Jaime Martinez. I'm a branch chief within GSA under the multiple awards schedule, ITC, the information technology category. And I'm part of a team within GSA that worked with fiscal services to develop the acquisition strategy for the FMQSMO marketplace. And ultimately this SIN 518210FM which went live in the latest refresh, which was refresh 12 um, on May 16th. <clears throat> I do wanna make a note um, that the technical evaluations templates under the mass scope and templates page are not up there yet. Um, there were some changes that we needed to make and needed to get them 508 compliant. And so we are working on getting that done and hope to have them available by the end of this week. Uh, regarding this training for housekeeping, please note that your computers are on mute. If you have questions, please use the Q&A function uh, and we'll monitor those questions and answer as appropriate. We are recording this session for vendor training. Um, the recording will be available on the Acquisition Gateway under the IT Acquisition University vendor training and we'll get that uploaded. Um, with that, let's see, Steve, we're at 221 participants, um, so I'll hand it over to you. Okay, great. Thank you, Jaime. Um, welcome, everybody. And as the number of participants continues to 
slowly climb. Uh, very excited to see such interest. Um, you know, we have continued to see a lot of energy from the industry side um, for the past couple of years, really, as, as Treasury, you know, has received the designation to be the QSMO for core financial management and had spent the better part of these past two years um, really determining what, what the strategy would be for developing the FMQ Smoke marketplace and then engaging with both agencies as well as industry to help us as we design you know, what that marketplace looks like and, and ultimately determine what acquisition you know, solution would be most appropriate uh, to provide access to the commercial solutions. And as Jaime mentioned, uh, ultimately culminating earlier this week with the establishment of this new FMQ SMO SIN within the IT category of GSA's mass solicitation. So I want to thank you all, not only for your past participation and support, but also um, continued now that the SIN is, is live and, and we move into kind of the, the phase of populating the marketplace with providers and then turning to focus on agencies utilizing the marketplace. I want to I want to thank GSA, you know, as, as you're all aware, Treasury and GSA have partnered um, in developing what this acquisition solution has become, and, and ultimately GSA creating that SIN for us in Refresh 12 earlier this week. I want to give special thanks to the GSA team in supporting not only us in establishing that, um, but also in hosting this webinar today so that we can you know, provide some added context and, and information that will be helpful to vendors that are interested in, in participating on the new SIN. Um, I already mentioned it's been a feels like it's been a long road to get here. You know, several years of work have gone into designing how this works and refining kind of how this would be structured to best kind of meet in between um, providing benefit to the federal space and to agencies. Um, but also providing benefits to industry, which we continue to believe that there are there are multiple benefits to industry as well to this approach and this new vision for shared solutions uh, via the QSMOs. Um, you know, acknowledging our primary audience today for this webinar is vendors and interested vendors um, looking at this new SIN, but acknowledge we have a lot of other participants as well, federal participants and other nonprofit entity type uh, representation as well. So welcome everybody and, and hopefully there will be good information that we'll have to share with you today. Let's go ahead and advance to the next slide, please. Just a general disclaimer, you know, the purposes of this webinar today are for us to share with you kind of a general overview and uh, of what this application process looks like, what submission packages uh, specific to this new SIN are, and what that evaluation process um, will be for this, which is outside the norm for most of the SINs on the GSA schedule contracts. But I do want to say, you know, the purposes of, of the information we're sharing here today are not intended to supersede or conflict with any of the general or specific instructions and guidance that are either provided on the GSA mass solicitation, the IT category attachment, or specifically of the SIN uh, 518-210-FM itself. Um, so I want to say the intent here is to be complimentary and, and explain some of this in, in better detail, but certainly no intent uh, that any of this would supersede uh, what's formally in the solicitation and its feeders. Okay, so as far as our general agenda today, um, you know, we want to provide you with very quickly an overview of the FMQ SMO, very high level for those that, that may not have otherwise been aware. And then we're going to dive more specifically into, okay, the specifics associated with the application and evaluation process for the new FMQ SMO IT SIN. We'll talk a little bit about when we reach that point where a SIN award determination is made by GSA, um, what happens there, and then in the, in the later stages when agencies actually come to conduct acquisitions under the new SIN, um, what, where that burden lies in terms of what's being done up front at the marketplace entry level, SIN level evaluation versus things that are deferred um, to when agencies are actually going through their individual acquisition process. And then of course, to wrap it up, you know, we'll, we'll talk about, we'll, we'll review some of the key takeaways that we've gone over um, in the materials today. And I do wanna mention a couple other things. We have a few polling questions, uh, maybe better termed like knowledge checks along the way here. Um, when we prompt those and, and GSA launches those, would encourage you know participants to 
to respond to those polling questions as they come up. And um, the intent for those is just to reinforce some of the key points as we go through the materials. Jaime mentioned up front, um, there is a Q&A feature open for the webinar. We wanna save those till the end. I mean, certainly we wanna make sure that we get through everything we wanna share with you all today and this time. If we do end up with time at the end, um, we may be able to address some of the Q&A in real time, um, but certainly um, understand the caveats as you know, some questions we may need to uh, take offline um, and may, may not be able to address in real time, depending on what they are. And then one final note, Jaime also mentioned you know, that this webinar is being recorded. The intent um, will be to publish this, um, not just the materials, but also this session as well. Um, at a later date for vendors to either revisit or, or those that were not able to attend today can, can still view it. And so the materials and, and this session itself will be made available um, to you all after the session. So moving ahead to the next slide, I wanna quickly go over some of the learning objectives we have today. Um, by the end of today's training session, our hope and intentions are that vendors will have the information needed to, at first, define the purpose of the FMQ SWIM marketplace and of the financial management capability framework, the FMCF, to have the information needed to apply to the FMQ SWIM ITSIN 518210 FM, have information needed to identify and apply which of the evaluation criteria are relevant to your specific FM solutions and services that you may propose in response to this then. Have information needed to be able to demonstrate uh, the capabilities of CoreFS offerings that can show the ability to meet requirements of the FMCF. And then lastly, um, have the information needed to differentiate the types of acquisition activities that are occurring at the marketplace entry level uh, versus those that are, that are occurring later um, when agencies actually actually conduct their acquisitions in the FMQ SWIM marketplace. Okay, thanks, Steve. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Garen Benke, and I'm a business analyst with the Financial Management Quality Service Management Office, the FMQ SMO. And we were designated by OMB back in June of 2020. Since then, we've been working diligently with all stakeholders to deliver a customer-centric marketplace for modern standards-based solutions that move agencies away from outdated systems. And on the next slide, you'll see that um, we, we aren't acting as providers of financial management services and solutions. We are uh, acting as a broker role in between agencies and uh, commercial vendors offering financial management services and solutions in the FMQ SMO marketplace. The marketplace will offer standardized solutions and services that encourage innovation, ensures compliance with federal financial management policies, and meets agency baseline needs. You'll see on the next slide that you know, we've got the, the baseline needs here um, defined by the Federal Financial Management Capability Framework. And you, you might ask, you know, how do you define those baseline needs for federal agencies? And the Federal Financial Management Capability Framework is what defines that. They define the baseline needs in nine components that you'll see visually here on the right of our slide, and then also on our FMQSMO webpage that I believe Alan's gonna be pulling up here in just a second to show you. You can reference our webpage to take a look at the nine federal financial management capability components. And they're listed down through, uh, through the scrolling down through the, our, our uh, FMQSMO website. You can open each one of those um, and there's information in there within the documents that talk about what each one of those components include, what those, um, what those standards are, what the capabilities are. And then down at the bottom, we'd like for you to note that there's an additional references section that includes the guide to the marketplace and FMCF 101 training. 
What's important to note is that the FMCF will be used as a basis for evaluating marketplace services and solutions. And depending on what you offer and, and propose to the FMQ SMOSIN, only a subset of the FMCF components may apply. So with that, we'll move to our first polling question. Let me get that up here. Okay, true or false? All components of the FMCF apply to every solution and service offering in the FMQSMO marketplace. All components of the FMCF apply to every solution service offering in the FMQSMO marketplace. True or false? We'll give you folks a few seconds to respond to that. Ben, you can, I guess, let us know when you think you've got a good set of responses. <laughs> Great. The answer is false. Good job, everybody. Uh, the applicability of the FMCF component does depend on the type of vendor offering. Further, some portions of the FMCF component may not apply to some vendor offerings. For example, a cost accounting solution may not be associated with all the FFM functions and activities, maybe only with the FFM uh, 080 cost management. So good job. Thank you for answering. False is the answer. Okay, so now that we've covered the FMCF and a short review of the FMQSMO, uh, let's take a look at the FMQSMO IT SIN application process. Um, that's a, a pretty significant reason why we're all here, and we'd like to talk about that with you. Um, as Steve mentioned earlier, to give you a little bit of background on the next slide, um, GSA partnered with us to establish the FMQSMO special item number, which is referred to as a SIN, under GSA's mass contract vehicle. The mass contract vehicles are widely used across the government. And in particular, the FMQSMO SIN um, gives customer agencies access to the commercial offerings in our, in our marketplace, the FMQSMO marketplace. So here we've touched on a few highlights for your awareness um, so that you can be aware of them prior to the application process. GSA, although FMQSMO is the FMQSMO SIN, um, it's our namesake, GSA will serve as the contracting activity for the SIN, but the FMQSMO will be conducting the technical evaluations. Um, the SIN is available for continuous vendor onboarding. So that's a, a real uh, positive for this acquisition approach. So we're here when you're ready. Uh, it's, it's available for continuous vendor onboarding and um, that, that serves as a, a vehicle for us to onboard vendors uh, when, when new solutions and services are available um, and when agencies needs may change and uh, primarily uh, here in the next couple of months as, as we've identified what agencies needs currently are. Agencies will place orders under the sun for the commercial financial management solutions and services they need. So agencies are going to use this sun to perform their acquisitions under the multiple award schedules that uh, the GSA has to offer under the IT category. The scope of the FMQ SMOSIN includes the core FS solutions, obviously. They're on the right of the visual we have on or the, the section we have on this slide. The CoreFS Solutions is included in the FMQ SMO uh, scope and also other information technology related to the solutions and services that augment or are complementary to the core financial management support that support agency modernizations. 
Uh, with that, we'll, we'll go on to how to apply to the FMQ SMO IT CIN, and Steve's going to review that process for you. Sure, thanks, Gavin. And I neglected uh, to introduce myself, I guess, at the beginning. But for those of you that haven't, um, I guess, heard some of our, our other engagements over the past couple of years, my name is Steve Nolter. I'm also a member of the FMQ SMO team within Treasury. And uh, primarily, I lead kind of our acquisition efforts associated with um, the marketplace, hence the topic of, of, the, of the webinar today with this new SIN. So, you know, looking at the specific process associated with this new SIN, you know, commercial vendors will undergo a, multi, a multi-phase process to be added to this new SIN and in, in the FMQ marketplace. Um, big first step is you need to understand the GSA MASS program because that is obviously essential for participating on this SIN. Um, understand that a, a vast majority of, of interested vendors are already GSA mass contract holders, but also acknowledge that there are some vendors interested in kind of entering the space or that don't currently hold a GSA mass contract. And so this opportunity is available to both existing GSA vendors, as well as um, prospective new GSA contract holders. For more information on that, because there's a, there's a variety of resources available to you to understand what, what process you need to go through, um, you can visit GSA's Vendor Support Center to find out more about that. But as an essential first step, be familiar and understand the GSA MASS program before looking to participate on this new SIN. Um, as we go into the details about kind of the technical aspects of the SIN, um, if there are questions about those technical aspects associated with the SIN, the financial management cap capability framework, the specific uh, response templates um, that are part of the submission package for this SIN, um, those technical facing questions can be posed to the FMQ SMO. And you can see our general mailbox there for your, for your use. Now at the bottom of this slide, you see kind of four high level phases or steps to this process. Number one, getting ready. Two, actually preparing your submission, submission package three, submitting that package, and then four, uh, being evaluated. And we're gonna look at some of the details of those steps now as we move forward. So step one, get ready. So we've talked a lot about review this, become familiar with this, and there is a lot of materials that you need to be aware of, but breaking it down at a high level here, you know, before you look to apply to the marketplace, apply to this new SIN, you need to first review the scope of SIN 518210FM and those materials associated with it. And you need to look at the four subgroups that are included under this SIN, which you can see depicted there on, on the right of this slide, um, and determine of the potential solutions and services you might propose in response to this SIN, where do they fall within the scope of those subgroups? Um, as Garen mentioned previously, core financial management solutions, the core FS, is kind of the flagship of, of the scope of this SIN, but there are a lot of other critical offerings that are within scope as well. And you see um, you know, descriptions of those other three subgroups that are included in the SIN. And you know, those are critical as well. So we wanna make clear, you know, vendors can bring non-core FS solutions provided that they are relevant to kind of what the scope of the FMQ SMO marketplace is. And um, understanding that they need to fall within an IT kind of fencing because this SIN does exist within the IT category of the GSA mass contracts. Um, once you've determined that, you need to kind of pivot and focus on, again, looking at the FMCF. Uh, version 1.0 of the FMCF was published last month. I know a lot of vendors had you know, been aware of that, provided feedback on that along the way with RFIs that, that the FMQ SMO had put out over the past couple of years. But version 1.0 of that has now been released. And I know some vendors have already you know, started to review that and understand what, what they would need to document and what, what burden of compliance they would need to meet for certain types of offerings that they may bring to the SIN and the marketplace. Garen highlighted these, but along with the FMCF, there's two other critical pieces. One, the guide to the FMQ SMO marketplace, which kind of helps tie that all together. How does the FMCF apply to the marketplace? When does it apply? How do those components of the FMCF complement or play off of one another? 
And so that's a critical piece is to maybe start with that guide to the marketplace to understand kind of how the FMCF is structured um, and how it works together. And then lastly, a new piece of uh, a new resource available is a um, kind of self-guided uh, training deck, FMCF 101, to help dive deeper into components of the FMCF, how they can be reviewed, understood, and how they're applied uh, when, when considering solutions and services you may bring to the marketplace. So in the next slide, we get into step two, which is preparing that submission package. So again, right up front, any administrative, technical, and pricing elements of a submission that are required by the GSA mass solicitation or of the IT category attachment at large, those obviously need to be complied with and, and are things that existing GSA contract holders are familiar with. Um, so be aware of that. Um, those those normal, normal requirements are still in effect there. Now getting into some of the specific items that are that are you know, different in this new SIN. Um, you know, one, you see in that middle, middle section of this document here, or, or this slide, all vendor submission packages need to include certain things. And you can see kind of three elements there. Uh, the first being documentation for the proposed offerings uh, that you want to include in this SIN in the FM QSMO marketplace. And you will document those proposed offerings using the FM solution service definition template. Now that template, some of you have seen, um, you know, that was released in, in prior versions with the FMCF, uh, but ultimately at this point, it in and of itself is not a component of the FMCF. It is intended to capture and complement, to make it easier to document, you know, what portions of the FMCF uh, apply to certain offerings. But now at this stage, that template is a vendor resource that you all will use in responding uh, to this SIN. The second item you see there is a technical narrative response, which addresses the FMQSMO marketplace entry level evaluation criteria. So by having that, you know, you all that have looked at the FMCF, one of the components of the FMCF is the solution service evaluation criteria, but not everything that's captured in that component of the FMCF applies to every offering certainly, but beyond that, not everything that's captured in that, um, in that FMCF document is being evaluated by the FMQSMO at the marketplace entry level, only certain things. In the technical narrative response template that, that'll be available to you all, the only criteria that it identifies in that document are those that would be evaluated at the marketplace entry level. And it also uh, tries to help in terms of crosswalking, okay, for certain types of offerings, you know, what criteria may not be applicable, even under that, what specific indicators may not be applicable to certain types of offerings. And then lastly, in within any of those template documents, um, you know, it's expected that vendors may make reference to other supporting documentation. Um, and so certainly we want to acknowledge that there's that opportunity to provide kind of an electronic volume of any supporting documentation that you may have referenced in those narrative response or in the definition template as you've completed that. Um, now, forking off. So those items are required for any vendor submission package in response to the SIN. For the Core FS subgroup, so specifically for Core FS solutions, there are some additional items. First is another response template, which focuses on the, the pre-built business information exchange, BIEs, that are required for Core FS solutions. Um, there is a separate template specific to that uh, where vendors will address the required BIEs, whether it be for treasury centralized systems, other government-wide systems, um, et cetera. Those are captured in that separate template document. And then again, um, a, a volume of supporting documents would um, would apply to Core FS submissions. Um, so we'll talk a little bit in a few slides about a Core FS uh, OCD, which is Operational Capability Demonstration Plan. There are some required evidence items that would come out of that, that would come into play with that capability demonstration. So the documents associated with those evidence items, reports, BIE files, et cetera, those will be provided as a um, volume of supporting documents for Core FS submissions as well. So let's look a little deeper. Um, and, and I want to say too, Jaime also acknowledged this. 
those specific templates and um, the additional information that's included on things like the OCD execution plan, those um, are forthcoming, we think, hopefully by the end of this week, but um, you will see them soon and they contain critical that we know you all want to see. So moving on to the next slide, I want to talk a little bit about the FM Solution Service definition template. At a high level, you can see kind of what sections of that template include. An overview, obviously identifying the vendor, uh, the describing that proposed solution or service, and then it starts to get deeper into different aspects that you all will document. A business view, um, put simply, is showing how this is within scope of federal financial management. So a good example there is, you know, we list all those FFM functions and activities that are essentially the scope of the FMQ small marketplace. And for the proposed solution or service that, that a vendor is bringing forward, you need to be able to map that to, to at least one of the FFM functions and activities uh, to show that it is within scope of this. And, you know, the guys there is, offerings of a general IT nature are not, are not intended to be included on this SIN. Um, will there be IT solutions and IT services? Certainly, but they need to be tailored in a way or, or you know, correlated um, in a way to some of these FFM functions and activities because that is kind of the fencing uh, of the scope of this SEN and of the FMQ for marketplaces, that it's FFM related, not of a general IT nature. Um, the, another key section that we get into is referred to as asset view in it. This looks at you know, what a vendor uses to build that solution or service and also kind of how, how it would be provided. So thinking about you know, some of the information that you all will document in this template are things like identifying the type of resource used in delivering it. So think um, how the federal government re recognizes TBM. So technology, workforce, advisory, and then within that, you know, the sub towers and, and, and cost pools associated with how, how um, IT resources are categorized. Those are the types of information that we're looking for vendors to identify there for their proposed offerings. And then lastly, you know, key responsibilities. And, you know, this is, this is looked to align with ITIL practices, which is essentially identifying who's responsible in some of these key areas, whether the service provider delivering it's responsible for it, or whether it's a responsibility that would still be deferred to say the agency that would be procuring it. Um, some of this detail, you know, you won't understand until you're actually viewing and, and looking at the template, but um, again, open to questions on these technical aspects of it as you look at it. Um, these individual templates do have more specific instructions included within them to try to be helpful and explain. Um, so once you take a look, there may be more there. And Alan, if you want to pull up the definition template, I'm going to quickly highlight a couple of aspects about it. <clears throat> so one key thing as Alan's pulling it up is vendors only need to submit a single version of this template as part of their submission package. So a vendor may be proposing 20 different solutions or services to be included under the new SIN, you still only need to submit a single version of this document. Um, you will see at the bottom, um, there are tabs across it. There is a template tab included. You will simply create a new template or a new tab um, for each of your proposed offerings and then document the information on it. And I wanna be clear, when you see the list right off the bat, you start seeing all these FFM functions and activities. There is not, and let me say this clearly, there is not an expectation that offerings apply to all of these FFM functions and activities. Like I had mentioned earlier, as long as an offering maps back to at least one of the FFM functions and activities, that's sufficient. And you're going to see applicability to those, you know, differ for different types of offerings. So kind of a full opposite ends of the spectrum, something like a core FS, a SaaS solution, every one of those FFM functions and activities is going to be included or mapped to that offering. But then say for technology operations support or some of those non-core but complementary services, there may only be one or two or any number of FFM functions and activities that are applicable. And that's true of, of the rest of these, um, rest of these fields you are as well. Do not be afraid to put in a 
where it's appropriate because there is not an expectation that everything applies to every offering. So we just wanna acknowledge that because we understand it can be daunting when you look at this list, but understand that expectation is not there that all of these things apply to every offering. Um, Alan, I can't see, and I don't know if others can, the tabs at the bottom, but I'll kind of speak to it across the bottom. And if you can't see it now, when you, when you have access to the template, you will notice there are multiple examples um, that we have provided as a helpful tool. So like this right now that Alan has up is a blank template. This is the template that you all will use and create you know, repetitively tabs for to document your specific offerings. But we have done some examples of those which are provided in this document as well. For example, we have an example of a core FS SaaS. We have an example of a, say an additional FM solution, which is a software only solution. And that's what Alan's kind of toggling through now understand a few things. Those examples are not meant to convey government requirements. We're not saying, for example, in the core FS SAS example, that does not indicate how you would have to document your core FS SAS. It's just an example of that. Um, so, you know, we are not prescribing what these, what these packages and proposed solutions and services need to include. That is left to your all's discretion. And that's why you're using this to document it so that we understand what's in and what's out of a proposed offering. So I just wanna clarify that. And one other thing to clarify, this, is ser this serves as a basis or a foundation for kind of the offering at the marketplace level and in the SIN. Um, agencies will certainly come along and further refine, add to, et cetera, but at a base level, at a baseline level, this is intended to capture that at the marketplace. So let's go ahead and go back to the deck, Alan, and um, let's go ahead and advance to the next slide. So again, talking about things that are required for all vendors and all offerings in the marketplace, we have the definition template. The two other pieces then are the technical narrative response, which I talked briefly about. And I wanna be clear here too, that template, and Alan, if you have it, you can flash it up real quick. Same thought as far as there is a template tab that you all can use to fill out and then search your technical responses to these various applicable criteria, but you would create a tab for each offering again, and they should align kind of one for one with what you have in the definition template. So if you have 10 offerings in the definition template, you should also have 10 offerings in the technical narrative response template because there's where you're kind of, this is essentially your technical proposal where you're writing here and addressing uh, these various needs. So I just wanted to hit that intention of one for one, you would create a, a response per offering um, using this template. And again, you will certainly have details to look through and peruse when they become available and any questions that may come up at that time you can pose to us. So let's jump back to the deck and keep moving. So you all will use that technical narrative response template to address those marketplace entry level criteria, which are identified in that template for you. Um, and again, any references to supporting documentation you may make um, in that document can be included in your volume of supporting documentation as applicable. Um, if you and, and just one other note, please, in, in what you're doing in that technical narrative response, there is a column for you all to make reference to that supporting documentation. Try to be specific about identifying and, and pointing to where that documentation is being provided so that it's you know, consistently being um, attributed to the correct section as FMQSMA is conducting its evaluations. Okay, so let's jump to the next slide. So those things are required for all vendors and all offerings that are being proposed. For core FS solutions, and so vendors applying to the core FS subgroup, um, there are those, I, there, those unique additional items that need to be submitted as part of that package as well. Um, first is the core FS pre-built BIE response template. And as I had previously mentioned, the intention there is that is focused on the required pre-built BIEs associated with CoreFS solutions. Um, and, and similarly, if you all have references to other supporting documentation in that template, it can be part of that 
volume of supporting documentation. But again, only applicable here for if, if you're a vendor that's proposing a CoreFS solution. And then for you know, CoreFS, being that there will be capability demonstrations, there would also be those evidence-related items, reports, BIE files, et cetera, which are identified and outlined in the CoreFS OCD execution plan, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about. And actually, let's jump to that now and let's talk about it. So for CoreFS solutions, for proposed CoreFS solutions, in the CoreFS subgroup of this SIN, um, part of the evaluation, which we'll talk about a little more, um, will include an operational capability demonstration. Um, you know, that operational capability demonstration will consist of six business uh, scenarios that have been developed based on selected FFM business use cases, functions and activities, and, and other system requirements that are relevant. Um, those core FS, uh, the core FS OCDs will be conducted by vendors using vendor provide vendor maintained instances of their proposed solution in a vendor provided cloud environment. So, I want to clarify and confirm: we are not expecting that you bring you know a proposed instance of your solution and put it into a government environment. We are not expecting that it outright interfaces with other government systems that it has to. Not at this marketplace evaluation level and not at this you know, response level. Um, we are just simply asking that you all are conducting this capability demonstration and showing that in your maintained instance of this proposed solution. So it's a much lighter, um, lighter lift than what might, might have otherwise been the case with very rigid testing or full validation uh, functions. That is not the intent of these capability demonstrations. And you can see there on the right of this slide, that CoreFS OCD execution plan, which is one of the items that you will see become available on the GSA uh, scope and templates page, hopefully by the end of this week, that is not a template that you are responding to, but that execution plan does contain information you will need to conduct the demonstrations. It includes the step-by-steps of the business use cases. It includes the sample data sets that you will use um, so that we can confirm the, the outputs of those. And essentially, it's a run of show of the order in which you'll demonstrate the scenarios, the fact that the scenarios build upon one another successively. So steps or functions that may have been demonstrated in scenario one, you know, if they're repetitively demonstrated in, say, scenario three, you won't have to fully demonstrate those again. It can reference that those have been demonstrated in a prior uh, scenario. So we're trying to make it as sufficient as or as um, efficient as possible, make it as light as we can, but still allowing us at the marketplace entry level, FMQ SMO, to evaluate um, kind of those core functionalities that the core FS solutions need to be able to do. So I think that brings us to our second polling question. So another true or false, true or false, all vendors must describe how their offerings are within the scope of federal financial management uh, mission support functional area as part of their submission package. And thinking here as we've reviewed kind of what goes into a submission package, things that are required for all, things that are only required for CoreFS, true or false, all vendors must describe how their proposed offerings are within scope of the FFM mission support functional area as part of that package. You guys were paying attention. Of course, it probably helped that it was uh, in, in close proximity to this, but yes, the, the correct answer is true. Um, you know, vendors will use that FM solution service definition template that we talked about to document which of the FFM functions and activities a proposed solution or service um, are associated with. Um, and again, they need to be associated with at least one FFM function or activity to be within scope of the FMQ small marketplace and of this new SIN. Okay, so moving past step two of preparing that package, you know, you're now at the point where you're gonna submit that package, step three, and ultimately then enter the evaluation um, phase of this, which is step four. Um, you know, once your submission package is assembled, you will submit that through either the e-offer or e-mod 
um, system, whichever is applicable to your scenario, e-offer for new vendors, e-mod for existing GSA mass contract holders. And once that, once that submission has been received, then the evaluate, evaluation process will begin. Um, again, G, similar to the, to the submission, uh, required submission elements themselves, GSA FAST will be evaluating the normal general administrative, technical, and pricing elements of those submissions like they would otherwise. FMQSMO will be evaluating just the specific technical elements associated with this SIN. Um, and again, we've we've highlighted where some of that's captured, so I don't want to repeat it all because you need to look at it. But um, those are things that will be available to you to understand what it is we are evaluating. For the Core FS providers only, again, um, you'll you'll there will be a demo involved in that, and we'll, we'll kind of talk about that a little bit here shortly. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, similar to what's done for other GSA SINs. As your packages are being rated, everything is being rated on an acceptable, unacceptable uh, basis uh, based on the documentation and or the demonstration um, that you've provided showing that compliance with applicable components of the FMCF. So at the bottom of this slide, you can visually kind of see how that process works. The vendor submits their package using eOffer or eMod. Once it comes in, GSA uh, will begin to work on reviewing that package and will evaluate the things that it normally does. And then concurrently, um, FMQSMO will evaluate the technical narrative response aspects of that vendor submission package. Now you hit a decision point after that, does the application include core FS? If no, then FMQSMO will provide those evaluation results and our recommendation to GSA for action. If yes, then we move on to kind of that second phase of the evaluation, wherein the core, the proposed core FS solution would go through that operational capability demonstration. And then once that capability demonstration would be completed, FMQSMO would provide those evaluation results and the recommendation to GSA for action. And want to be clear there too, as we've talked about, GSA is the contracting activity for this, and they retain authority for that. So while FMQSMO is conducting the technical evaluation of these pieces, we are providing those results and a recommendation to GSA, but GSA will ultimately make the award or non-award uh, determination as, they, as they're serving as the contracting activity. Next slide. Hey, Steve, before yes. we move on, I just want to acknowledge that we are receiving the questions that are coming in, and we are going to try to the best of our ability to um, take a look at those and address those at the end of the, the presentation so everyone um, has an idea of what's been asked and can receive the same, same response. And anything we can't get to, we said this earlier um, in the training, but anything we can't get to, we'll definitely come back and answer those Um after the presentation is over. Thank you. Go ahead, Steve. Thanks. Okay, so on slide 18, Alan, so of the two phases of evaluation that the FMQSMO is conducting at the marketplace entry or the SIN level, the first is the evaluation of that technical uh, narrative response. Um, you know, for this is applicable for all vendors, for all proposed solutions and services. We will be doing this evaluation for all of that. Um, you can see there that evaluation will include review in up to five categories, and you can see those five categories there. Um, and then you can see, again, not all evaluation uh, categories, let alone individual criteria themselves, apply to every offering, similar to how the FMCF doesn't apply universally to all offerings. And then you can see on the right hand there, for example, again, high-level buckets, services only, you know, we're not evaluating in the, in the categories associated with technology design or technology operations. Um, for other technology, it does include all five of those categories. And then Core FS, which is essentially a form of, of technology in this case, all of those categories apply as well. And then just want to acknowledge, and Garen will talk about this a little bit, um, you know, we're doing this, this marketplace entry level evaluation but agencies will certainly have the ability to conduct further evaluation at their individual acquisition level. So moving on to the second phase, uh, for core FS solutions, there will be that um, OCD evaluation that would occur. Um, you know, once the written part of the evaluation would be completed and we've been able to determine that there were acceptable, acceptable results from that, um, FMQSMO will reach out to the vendor to schedule that OCD. 
and work with you all to find a time and get that on the books and, and conducted. Um, the core FS OCD evaluation includes both the live demonstration uh, that you all, that the vendors would conduct in real time, but then also understand too, you know, the FMQ SMO would also kind of separately be reviewing uh, those OCD reports and BIE files and the documentation of those that you all had provided uh, as, as is outlined in the OCD execution plan. So the purpose of providing those separately is to help it be more efficient in time. Um, you know, we are limiting the time frames with which vendors can conduct these demos. And you'll see there the last bullet, <clears throat> the actual live demonstration portion, portion of the capability demonstrations will be limited to not more than eight hours during a single business day when we set those up. And you can see there on the right, the six uh, business scenarios that have been identified that are included in the capability demonstrations. And understand too, the details behind not just these scenarios, which are included in the OCD execution plan, which you will have access to in the short term, and also the details behind those evaluation, uh, written evaluation categories that you saw in the prior slide. You will see those within the narrative response template and are also in line with what's captured in the evaluation criteria component of the FMCF. So the details behind those will be available to you. And you'll understand how we're evaluating and can certainly do some level of self-assessment and self-preparation uh, prior to engaging in these. And I think that'll bring us to our third and final polling question. What category or subgroup of solution service offerings require an operational capability demonstration. And you can see there multiple choice, which identifies the four subgroups uh, that are included under the SIN. And also this represents um, several of the categories that are within the scope of the FMQ SMO marketplace. What, cat, what FMQ SMO marketplace category or SIN 518210FM subgroup of offerings require an operational capability demonstration. Do we have results? Okay, good. Yes, that is correct. The correct answer is CoreFS solutions. Only the CoreFS solutions require capability demonstrations as part of the marketplace entry level response and evaluation. All right. Thanks, Steve, uh, for that review of the evaluation process uh, and application and evaluation process. That was quite a bit uh, of information. And uh, now let's talk about what happens after the evaluations have been complete. So when an evaluation is complete, you'll see from this event's timeline that the FMQ SMO will provide the results and a recommendation to GSA. And GSA will make the final award decision. Once the SIN is awarded, vendors may compete for the opportunities in the FMQ SMO marketplace. So once agencies have requirements, and a vendor has been awarded a, the FMQ SMO SIN, um, you, can, you are more than, than welcome to, to start competing um, at the agency acquisition level. Uh, after award the FMQ SMO, then we'll use what you've submitted to fill in our marketplace catalog, which will be available on our FMQ SMO website. Uh, commercial providers will be on our website along with the federal shared service providers and some of the services that are offered by the Bureau of the Fiscal Service. If there happens to be a decision not to make an award, the vendors um, have an opportunity to resubmit your package. So do not fret, uh, there's always a, another chance and uh, we would like for you to take that opportunity if there is a chance that uh, an award decision was, was not made the first time around. Uh, we'll talk about the agency acquisitions on the next slide. Uh, agencies, like I said, will satisfy the fair opportunity and conduct further evaluations of the vendors, services, and solutions 
at the agency acquisition level. So same way they do right now, agencies are going to use the, the mass uh, contracts and um, specifically the vendors that are have been awarded the FMQ Smithson, and they're going to submit uh, solicitations to uh, solicit for your offers for their federal financial management solution service needs. Um, the agency specific requirements will be defined in addition to the FMCF standards and capabilities. Therefore, vendors that are offering solutions and services through the marketplace, you may be expected to demonstrate your ability to meet additional agency specific requirements as needed. And that's um, at the agency acquisition level. You'll see at the bottom of the slide a visual that depicts the agency acquisition process. And, and it's for the most part business as usual, but there is a slightly new step in the acquisition process where agencies will engage with us in a task order review board uh, prior to is issuing the solicitations. And um, they will also be providing us with a copy of the award once their acquisition has been completed. So let's now take a look back at um, the key takeaways for this training, which should map back to the learning objectives that we talked about right in the beginning of this, this presentation. Um, we've talked about and reviewed the FMQ SMIL IT SIN vendor onboarding from beginning to end. And uh, based on time, I won't uh, read each one of these, uh, but we encourage you to take a look at these takeaways, go back through the information that's been in this training, um, which we, we did discuss this recording will be available on GSA's Acquisition Gateway. Um, there will be a link provided to that. And we also encourage you to visit the FMQSMO website. Um, we, we showed the FMCF uh, web page that we have on our FMQSMO website. Um, there were other references to uh, templates and GSA websites throughout this, this training. So please go back through this information, visit those websites, visit those uh, documents and templates. And um, we really appreciate your time today. And I think the last few minutes of our, our session here, we'll take a look at the um, questions and answers and see what we might be able to answer for you live. And then also um, what we need to take back and uh, put together a little bit more formal of a response to your questions. Thanks so much. Yep, and I'll say too, just, <clears throat> just as additional, you know, we, we always say stay tuned. I mean, obviously details within the templates, details within the OCD execution plan, are things that you all will have access to in the very near term days um, is what we think. And so there will be more that you need to review and digest there. And as we mentioned, questions can be submitted and we can and we can try to engage directly with you as appropriate on you know clarifying and helping you understand these various aspects about this. Um, and, and there will be opportunities to do that. I know we're looking at setting up office hour sessions over the next month or so. And so stay, keep your eyes open for that so that we can make ourselves available to answer questions in real time, things about the FMCF, even things about this process, if helpful. So we'll make ourselves available. And then- Steve, one of the big questions was, in addition to the recording being made available, are we gonna make slides available? Yes. Yes, we will make both the, the deck available as well as the, the actual recording of the session, which GSA will make available. Thank you. So I know we'll run out of time. So protocol wise, um, some of these uh, questions I see um, me see if I can, grab some of these and we can address them. So Ben, I don't know if you can see where it popped up. So someone asked the question about the estimated time frame to complete these evaluations for non-CoreFS solution services. Uh, Treasury, so FNQSMO 
at least for the technical evaluations, which admittedly will be the, the bulk of the time um, that's taken to do these evaluations. We have target timeframes agreed to with GSA, um, kind of three buckets, one being like service only offerings that non-core FS, but for that matter, not even including um, technology. Those are the target turnaround timeframe for those evaluations is 20 business days. So essentially a month uh, for non-core solutions and services that do have a technology aspect. Um, the target turnaround uh, for those is 40 business days, so two months. And then just for context, for actual core FS solutions themselves, which include the demonstration on top of the narrative eval, um, the target turnaround for those is 60 business days, so three months. So a month, two months, and three months, respectively, for the heavier lift of evaluation for the types of offerings that would be proposed in a marketplace. And clarify, too, these would be vendor submission packages. So think of it in terms of like a vendor submission package that only includes service only that lower bucket, a service submit, uh, a vendor submission package that would include technology, it would be that middle bucket because we realize most vendors may have multiple uh, solutions or services that they're proposing. One last question, Steve. If offer submission is determined not within scope, meaning did not pass the technical evaluation, how for the offer can resubmit? Currently, uh, we do not have any restrictions specified as far as like a downtime. For example, there's nothing specified like, hey, if you've gone through evaluation and it's no, it's a non-award decision, you're not allowed to reapply within 30 days, 60 days. There is nothing specified in that regard. So in theory, um, you know, if, you, if a vendor receives notice that a non-award determination was reached, um, certainly, we would assume you all would want the feedback from GSA as to why it was a no, but um, upon remedying whatever those um, uh, reasons were, you would be able to turn right back around and resubmit uh, if you were so inclined. So, let me, and I'll, let me add to that, Steve, real quick. We would ask that GSA, as your resubmission package, that you address how you've remedied that, like just in the request letter, what you've done to say, okay, this is why I failed. And this is what I've done to remedy that in recent it. And it, I know I realize we're about at time, but I do want to hit one more question I had seen, which was like in determining that acceptable versus unacceptable um, rating for, for a vendor submission package. Overall is essentially everything as applicable, right? So for a specific offering, only certain eval criteria and only certain things are being evaluated. But for everything that's being evaluated for any specific offering, it would need to be found acceptable for everything that's applicable. And again, realize we are only evaluating that to the baseline level. So when you think about you know, the types of things that are evaluated, we are very much at the entry level and the SIN level evaluating what is the objective type things. And when you start thinking about things like usability, things that could be subjective, those are all things that are deferred to agency level acquisitions. We're only evaluating kind of the more objective aspects about this in terms of capabilities up front. But for any given offering, it would need to get acceptable for everything as applicable in order to be acceptable overall and let in. So as we're at time, I, I will just on behalf of Treasury and FMQ SMO again, deliver a very sincere thank you um, for the energy, the interest, and, and engagement um, throughout this whole process. I mean, we're excited that the SIN is now live as of earlier this week. We're excited that as you all have access to the templates and the other information in the next few days that um, you can begin looking at that and deciding when is the right time for you to apply because you have that latitude to decide when you're ready since the door remains open. Um, but you know, we're very excited that, that you all have helped uh, shape the form that this has taken. And you know, we look forward to continuing working with industry um, to populate the marketplace and get you know, solutions and services that agencies need in the FFM space available so that later this fiscal year, we can begin you know, working with agencies to utilize the marketplace. Um, and with that, Jaime, I'll turn it back over to GSA for any other closeout items. Uh, I know there were some questions about where this will be posted, the video. It will be on the Acquisition Gateway. Um, if you go to the Acquisition Gateway and then ITC category, and there's vendor training. Uh, and I'm sure we'll, we'll make it available 
the site available through Interact. So if you're, if you're on Interact, GSA Interact, you can get that information and Treasury will link to it as well on their uh, FMQ's most site. Yes, echo that. When GSA has this in the lo appropriate locations, we'll also look to update our resources to point to those as well. So. So that's, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for participating and um, joining us uh, and we can end the session.